Welcome everyone to another episode of Runner's Roundtable. Season three is all about the how-tos of running. And the guest that is joining me today is someone that we heard in season two as one of the run coaches. And she's back, Victoria Buecher, you're here. And part of what we talked about in our discussion was party pack. And I just loved that we touched upon that and introduced people to that. So this episode is going to be all about that. But before we really get into that and dive into that, can you just remind us who you are? Because you wear quite a few coaching hats so (laughs) that we know everything that you do, everything that you offer, and just the entire rainbow of who you are as a human being. I love how you say that too, especially with the party pack. Um, I will first say, if anyone is watching, um, I, I have a little scratch cornea this morning. So I look like a little bit of have my eye patch on and just, yeah. So, um, but I am Victoria. I'm a national board certified health and wellness coach. I studied at Duke Integrative Medicine and also the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, so full time, I work uh, as a health coach on a team. I also have my own private practice and work with women. Uh, typically over the age of 40, because I'm in that beautiful season of life, um, who have one or more chronic lifestyle diseases like hypertension, pre-diabetic, things like that, uh, to help them feel more energy and feel as good as they can with their wellness goals. I also am a RRCA certified run coach, and I work with the party pack runners like myself, back of the pack. Um, I teach spin at our local gym. I'm a mom of two little kids, have an amazing husband. Um, so definitely in that season of life that is um, always like constantly balancing everything. So thank you for letting me share a little bit about who I am. Yeah. And I, I feel you on the season of life. Yeah. And all I can tell you is that it does get easier. It gets harder, but it yeah. gets easier. Um, mm-hmm. My girls are 13 and 11 now, and it's amazing how much they can do for themselves. So I feel like I'm yeah. starting to rediscover myself and kind of come yeah. into myself as well. So it gets better. It gets better. It gets yeah. harder, but it gets yeah. better. So can you tell us, because this is something that I didn't even know what party pack was mm-hmm. until I'd say probably the Disney races are what tuned me into party yeah. pack. In your experience, what is party pack? Sure. So for me, uh, back of the pack. So we are the runners that are in that, you know, typically the 25% to finish towards the end. Um, The run walkers, the ones that are using the Galloway method, the speed walkers, the walkers, um, we're kind of all those together. Um, Party pack really is for me, also a safe place for the sport. Um, I know we all love watching, or the majority of us love watching sporting events and seeing that first, second, third place, the first female across the finish line. I mean, it is invigorating, it is exciting. The same for that is at the back of the pack, in that party pack. Seeing someone who maybe it's their first race or a millionth race push themselves of their own personal limits, not a preconceived notion of what a limit or a runner should be, to get to their finish line and celebrate them. Um, So to me, it's a a beautiful place. A lot of uh, not saying the elites and the the faster runners don't have that grit. They obviously do and they're tenacious and they're amazing. But I feel like there's something different in the party pack, in the back of the pack. Um, There's a lot more, I feel like self-doubt that is talked about. Elites have self-doubt. We all, majority of us struggle with imposter syndrome but it's talked about more. I don't fit in. I'm not a runner. I don't look like a runner. Um, maybe it's being a different body, able body, not able body, um, just a certain look. And I feel like that's discussed more in the party pack. And it really is, to me, it's a beautiful place. You said rainbows and I feel like it's just like rainbows and confetti, um, but it's also a lot of hard work and determination and grit in the party pack. And it is my favorite. Even at my fastest, I was still middle of the pack. I wouldn't, I never saw the front of the finish line like <laughs> until a bunch of people crossed before. So it's just, it's such a beautiful place to be and it's so welcoming. And I'm glad we're having this conversation too. So other people can know uh, that running is truly trying to be more accessible to everyone. We're not, not hundred percent there, uh, but we're trying to be more accessible uh, and the party pack is where it's at. Do you find, in, again, in your experience, are 
newer runners more likely to be in the party pack or yeah. experience? Or do you find that it's an entire range of experiences yeah. that join the party pack? Entire, uh, entire range of experiences. I mean, I have, um, you know, some of my friends who've never run before and like, oh, I'm going to train for 5k and they're smoking it like 24 minutes. Like, you know, and they've never run a day. They're just naturally, in, you know, able to do that. Um, I feel like it's a lot of, it's a good mix. New runners, but also seasoned runners, seasoned run walkers, seasoned walkers that are in the party pack and really uh, make it happen for themselves. How do we get people to know more about the party pack? Because I feel like, and I don't know, I, I mean, obviously I, I take full accountability of like the people that I follow, how yeah. I approach racing, how I go to races, but there was definitely a, a period of time for myself where I felt like being a quote unquote, successful runner mm -hmm. meant I had to be getting faster. Like I had yeah. to be getting, moving up in corrals yeah. instead of right. moving back. So how right. do we talk to people about that? Yeah. Change. I don't know if it's necessarily change their minds, but get people to open up to having a different experience when it comes to running and racing. Such a good question. I think it's a multi-layer answer there. I feel like also starting with run clubs and places where we get our running gear. If you're having a group run, um, I, even I was just at a conference the other day and I didn't want to do the group run because I am now back in um, where I am with young kids getting back into running more consistently uh, now that I'm getting somewhat more sleep. Um, but I didn't want to hold anyone back. And that's my own self-imposed fear. But having it be, you know, we'll have a run walker, we'll have a sweeper, we'll have someone stay with you. And I know that's not always 100% can happen. I understand that. But just reading the room of who's there. Um, if you're going to have a beginner run group, beginner run group is not everyone that runs a 10, 12 minute mile, eight minute mile. Well, you're going to have some 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Maybe someone's coming out for their first walk. Maybe someone just moved to the area and is recovering from an injury and does not want to push themselves and needs that party pack group to run with. Um, I feel like it also comes down to races. If you're saying that a race is a four hour time limit, that finish line needs to be open and amazing and beautiful. And the, the speaker and the announcer pumping and jamming and excited for the last person to reach that time limit as they are for the first. Um, obviously we can't do much about crowds still being there if that's the case, but that wouldn't that be amazing, but we're not tearing down. We're not having people get there and all they have is like half a banana left or we ran out of medals. Uh, or the DJ had to like pack up because their contract wasn't for the whole race. Then don't advertise a course that is open for four hours for a half. Then okay, it's a three-hour so course, you know? Yes. Like so I have a question because it's funny. I was yeah. actually talking to a friend about this yesterday and mm -hmm. I'm obviously I'm not a race director. Mm -hmm. I don't know the race directing side and the logistics yeah. side, but that's the thing that really fascinates me when they'll say it's a four hour course limit but it's supposed to be four hours from when the last group starts, right? Yeah. Not four yeah. hours from when the first group starts. Right. Especially if it's a chip time. I mean, if they're, you know, it's not, you know, a gun time, it's a chip time. So yes, it should be since the last runner crosses the start line. Um, I feel like that's a big misstep in a lot of races. Um, I've run a few where there's no more bands on the course. They just like stopped doing that. Um, I was pacing someone actually, and it, it's disheartening and they pay the same amount of money that we all do. And they trained hard and should be able to get the perks of it. Now, I also understand the logistics side, not fully understand, but I understand there's another side and permitting and having police and sheriff's departments and road closures. I get that. But then we really need to look at, is this truly a four hour half or is it a seven or eight hour marathon course? If it's not, then don't advertise it as, uh, for at least for me personally, I'm fully fine. I look at the course limits. Cool. I'm, I'll, I'll be good on that. Confident. But if it's a like six hour full, probably not my thing anymore. Like I, you know, we're okay. I'll just maybe go cheer, see if they volunteer if they have a half component to it. Um, but I really feel like they need to do due diligence with that on all sides. Like the runners need to make sure, like, are you adequately uh, trained to hit the race course time limit and the race directors and community 
can we have our city, you know, the street shut down for this long? Can we make it a, a customer from a customer service standpoint? Can we make it so everyone feels included and celebrated during their race? If not, then we need to pivot. Yeah, that was again, like that was something that I that I talked to one of my friends yesterday. I'm like, it's so interesting when we're talking about creating environments that are inclusive to everyone. Yeah how that's something. And I was actually after talking to you in Mm -hmm. the coaches conversation, I realized, oh, recommending people to sign up for races and do races to help them get started and running may not be the best thing because depending on where they land, whether they're front of the pack, middle pack or back of the pack, you might have three entirely different experiences 100%. Mm-hmm. that for me, I hadn't thought of, right? Because I've yeah. always been similar to what you shared. I've always been a middle of the pack runner yeah. and just, I try to move up, but I, I just, I want to have a little more fun when I'm running. I don't have yeah. the, that laser focus determination mm-hmm. when I run yeah. and that's okay. But even then I find that I don't know, being in the middle of the pack really Mm -hmm. sucks sometimes because I don't know where I fit in. Like I want to take it seriously, but does that make me more of a front of the pack runner? But I also want to have fun. So does that make me a back of the pack runner? And it just, to me, it always reminds me that there's so many nuances Mm -hmm. to being a runner and to showing up and doing these races. So I think that's in the racing experience how would you say this party pack mentality, how is that something that we can take out? Because obviously before we do races, we're doing some kind of training, right? Right. Like we're doing some kind of preparation. So how do we take that party pack race day mentality out into everyday life with us or into our training runs so that when we show up on race day, regardless of where we're at, we can stand proud in that and be like, yes, I am here. I am worth celebrating and I am going to celebrate myself and what I do. That's such a good question. When you were talking, I really feel it comes down to our own personal values. Mm -hmm. Why are we running? Are we running? And I feel like majority of runners I um, come across, they have a goal that's more aesthetically pleasing when they want to start running um, in their minds, but then it really turns into something else or they want to get healthier. Maybe their doctor gave them, uh, you know, maybe the high blood pressure. You need to start exercising. Well, my sister runs, so why don't I run? Um, which is great. I mean, I feel like everyone should run, but that's just me. Um, but I feel like why? Like, why are you running? Are you running because it's the social support? And every day, every week, Tuesday, Thursday after work, you have a 5.30 run club. You run, walk. Then you grab a beer after. Great. You like the social aspect of it. Um, are you running? Cause you're trying to get healthier. What does that look like for you? Are you running because it's your, your alone time? Are you a mom? And you, as soon as, you know, either before work, after work, if your partner works, what have you, that's your solitude time to really ground yourself for the day. Um, are you running? Cause it is fun. Are you a bling chaser? I love some good metals. So are you running for that? Are you running Disney races. So you want to take pictures of the characters. I really feel like it comes down to what's driving you and then being so solid in that, that when you show up on race day, you're okay with that. And I know a lot of us too, we all do it. As soon as the, you know, gun goes off, you ignore everything you know about training and you just, you, you know, a lot of us just like push pedal to the metal and then we tank. But if you're so strong in your, why you're there, Today's going to be a fun race, or I'm recovering from a hamstring injury. I'm going to take this one easy, this 5K easy. It's a three-mile easy jog for me on that day. Just knowing why you're there and how that um, feels to you inside, I feel like is a good starting point for us on kind of bringing that party pack to races, but also to training runs. You mentioned something earlier, and, and I'm just curious. I just, as I was hearing you talk, it occurred to me, you said that in the party pack, people are more likely to talk about, I feel mm. like maybe their struggles or maybe yeah. how they don't necessarily fit into the ideal of being a runner. Right. Is that, I guess my question is, is it that people are actively having those conversations or mm. like, how do those conversations come about? Because again, yeah. I think of myself, this middle of the pack run runner mm. and 
it's only like with my close friends when we're on long training runs that we talk about that stuff. But it's, it seems like, I feel like even when we talk about it, those feel like such deep conversations. And I'm curious if within the party pack, it's not necessarily that it has that depth, but that it's just something that gets spoken about so often that in your own way, you're breaking down those barriers yeah. within running. And I, I think so. So I know for me, a lot of it happened on training runs or at like, I still remember at like a 20 mile of the marathon where I was just tanking and had someone next to me. You just have those conversations. And a lot of it, I think, stems from um, systemically, but also what we see in media, what we have seen. Thankfully, things are moving in a positive direction. But, you know, we go into a running store, the mannequins don't look like you, whether that's body size, ethnicity, um, et cetera. But you also have in the running community, you, you see the elites and they, they, they're powerhouses as they should be. This is their job. They train for that. That's how it should be. But I think too, just having that conversation, especially if when things are getting tor- torn down early at a race or at a run club and no one's waiting for you. It's like, oh, they're not waiting for us again. We're slow. And that self-doubt comes in, but you're finding that community of other people who are also feeling it. So that's, I feel where the layers kind of chip away and you have some of those conversations together about it Um, to while you're having that self-doubt, you're lifting someone else up next to you. And I feel like this is an, our natural human progression to do that. So it kind of comes full circle together as you're talking about it. Does that help answer that question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is, uh, I don't want to say it this way, but I'm going to say it, right? Misery loves company. And when we're struggling and we talk about it, all of a sudden you realize you're not the only one that's struggling. You're not the only one that's that's dealing with that self-doubt, that idea. And I I just strongly dislike the idea of like, I'm too slow and- I can't keep up with the fast people. And it's like, it's so relative. And it really does connect back to the why. It is. And it is like the, I'm too slow. I feel like also it comes back to the why, why you're there, but also comes back to, I feel like sometimes in run clubs and and I've been, I've been, um, what's what I'm trying to use. I've done this before too, where we have a run group and we say, we're going to have some of everyone, but it ends up like I get caught up in running with my pace versus like, I've done it before too. Like I am not immune to this and perfect. Um, But if you, like I reached out to a run club on one of the places we lived, I'm not going to say where, cause it will be (laughs) obvious of which run club. Um, And I was like, Hey, I run about 12, 13 minute pace. I do run walk. Uh, Would love to know if you have any runners there. Cause like seeing their Instagram feed, it was a lot of speedy people, which is great. I love that. But I also knew to the area, didn't want to be left out at eight o'clock at night and the night runs by myself. And um, they're like, yeah, we'll let you know if we have any walkers come by. And I specifically put like, I do run like, and even if I didn't, but like just having that general wherewithal of like, there are runners that do run 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, that run walk um, and just being more inclusive of that. Um, but also if you can't provide that, that's okay too. Just don't say you do. Yeah. I, just listen, I, I was yeah. going to say, it's kind of, it's that I feel like I take issue when I see run clubs and they mm-hmm. say all levels welcome. Yes. And that happened to me too. Again, I won't say where I was y'all yeah. because all run clubs are great, but yes. I was somewhere new and I had a long run and I did not want to run by myself because I was somewhere new. Yeah. I reached out to a group and asked, you know, what's the mileage? Like, what are the paces? And I thought, okay, I can, I, I'm sure I can kind of keep up. Yeah. No, I kept up with everybody for maybe half a mile. And I was like, this is too fast. Like I, yeah. so for me, whenever I see that a run club, that their slowest quote unquote, slowest pace is a 10 minute mile or a 10 30. I'm like, okay, that's not for me. Like, it's great. Yeah. Like, again, yeah. I'm with you. Great for them. Great for their community. Correct. But mm-hmm. to me, it's always like, who are we leaving out with that? Right now, you had mentioned that the tides are turning, and that's something that I'm starting to notice more. I noticed it in particular with the New York City Marathon and the London Marathon that recently yeah. passed, where they had, I feel like it was almost as many posts dedicated yeah. to the last finisher yes. as it was to the first finisher. And right. 
in your opinion or in your experience, because I feel like this year was the first time I really noticed them like going mm. home with that. Yeah. You find that more races are doing that or I guess, how can we, because that, that is for me, I, I'm such a firm believer that it's us that are in the running community already right. are the mm -hmm. ones that open the doors for everybody else. Right. So is that something that you're seeing more races are trending towards? I think so too. And not just from a race standpoint, like as a, a, a running race, but also from a social media standpoint, I feel like we're coming to this beautiful time. Uh, obviously still lots of flaws, but we're celebrating everybody's moving, not just everybody, but everybody. And that is a beautiful thing. Um, so people can see people that look like them in the running community. Um, I know I, I, I'm white middle, now I say middle-aged, <laughs> white <laughs> middle-aged, you know, medium-ish size body. I, I, I have typically been a majority of running kind of advertisements for the most part. Um, but seeing the tide change and every type of body is being celebrated. I feel like that also is helping to break down barriers. That's going to be a slow change, but, um, I do feel like more accounts are sharing that because it's also what, what we all want. Like I haven't met, well, I'm sure there are people out there, but like, personally, I haven't met anyone that has said like, oh no, please don't show me that slower runner. That's not motivating. That is so motivating. So is the elite runner. That is all just everyone's out there doing their best in whatever body they have. And I think that's a how the tide is changing some in that regard too, as far as marketing as well. Yeah. And it's so interesting. Again, I'm I'm thinking back to this conversation I had with my friend yesterday, yeah. Lydia, if you hear this, you're totally inspiring some of these questions now. Sounds like a great conversation. It Lydia. was such a, we friend. did because we started <laughs> talking about some of this stuff. And I'm just curious because one of the things we talked about is how most of the people who are running don't really care about elites or don't really, they're not tuned into that stuff. It's yeah. the people who I feel like now I am because I have become such a lover of the sport and it's okay. really exciting. But when I first started running, I didn't really care. Like I didn't yeah. care who the first finisher was. Thanks. Like I didn't know yeah. any of the elite athletes. I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. How do we encourage people to kind of stay in that, like stay in that I don't want to say a bubble because obviously like it's good to know more about the sport yeah. and how the sport is progressing and changing. And like you said, marketing, we're starting to see more, yeah. but I guess it's, I guess my question is more along the lines of like, how do we help people party more and yeah. care less about yeah. pace? Stay in kind of that euphoric state of running, like the runner's high outside of the run, like that mental runner's high of being there. Um, I feel like too, running truly is such a simple sport. It really is. You can go out and run barefoot and just go like my kids, they run every day. They are runners. Um, I feel like when we get back to that as well, um, uh, I think especially new runners get so overwhelmed and what do I need? What gear, what this Well, just go out there. Of course, I'm always gonna be like properly fitted shoes, please. Let's yes. wear <laughs> like, I think, but in the true essence of it, it really is a simple sport for the most part. And once we get back to more play in it, mm -hmm. um, cause like kids running around the playground, I mean, my, I have a four year old and an almost 20 month old, they will run all day, every day outside and run me ragged. It, it they do every day, run me ragged, but, um, they have fun with it. So how can we bring fun back into training? That's what I work with a lot of my runners are on. Um, maybe signing up for a race isn't going to motivate you. That is totally, you don't have to. Are you just doing it for your solitude and that amazing cup of coffee that you get to sneak out of the house a little bit longer? Yes, you are still a runner, regardless if you sign up for a race, if you BQ, if you're running every single day or doing a running streak, it doesn't, what brings you joy? Again, bringing to that values. Um, and like, to me, I don't follow many, I mean, I follow the elites on social media and all that stuff, but like, I don't get into it either. I think it's super motivating. If I catch it, I catch it. I love hearing personally of the, the struggle of someone maybe, um, had a birth trauma and now they're coming back and getting into running. They did pelvic floor therapy and now they're, they're getting into it and they're doing their first 
you know, postpartum 5K and feeling strong, a different strong than they felt before they had kids. You know, before they were, analysis is a strong sense of purpose, their long-term health, that why that they're really yep. showing for. To me that I love seeing that, but I feel like it's um just getting back to basics with it. Um, I see there's a run club in, where did I see it on social media? Charlotte. I need to look up the name. I cannot remember, but they start with, it's like every Tuesday they have a run all levels run walkers. And it's like 300 people come out to this and they dance and it's a community. Um, and it just seemed, and getting that run, that fun of it. Yeah. Um, and that community, which is so important. I feel like if we all, if we continue to work on that, I feel like that the rest will follow. Yeah. All right. I've got three more questions for you. Yes. Go and, for it. Okay. So, because I've seen party pace, right? I see that everywhere. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on sexy pace? Ooh, what is, is that a new term? What is sexy pace? It's a new term for it. New Have term. you not yeah. heard sexy No, pace? I feel like the, see, I don't, I, I like to see things, but I also kind of stick in my little euphoric bubble I was talking about. That's um, why I'm like, I'm curious what you think about sexy this, pace. Because this is like hot I, mom summer, hot girl walk type sexy I it's think sexy. so. It's sexy okay. pace is like you're going out and you're like, you're, it's not, at least everything I've seen when it comes to sexy pace is 100% yeah. like you're going out there, you're feeling yourself, you're moving, you're light, you're laughing, you're having fun. Okay. I feel fun. like, I'm like, is that the new term for our party pace? I mean, I don't hate it, uh, but I, for myself, wouldn't call it that like I wouldn't think like, I'm gonna go run at a sexy pace um but I understand the tenets of it like that I I get it that makes sense I also tying into that I know I feel my most beautiful after a run when I'm mm -hmm. sweaty and I'm glowing and I stink I probably have salt all over my face I am just needing some food I feel like I look like in my photos my smile is brighter I'm just yes. glowing I look happy and to me, that is sexy. So I, I mean, I get that. I, I, I can see, I see the correlation. Uh, I still like party pack <laughs> and party pace, but uh, I mean, I ain't mad at it. I like the cool term. Yeah. Now <laughs> is, there you go. You've got, you've got new, I new got word in your vocabulary. I'm going to tell my husband I'm going out for a sexy pace run. He's like, well, <laughs> he might not want you to go out <laughs> if that's the case. He's like, what? <laughs> what are you doing now? Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so this is a question I ask every single episode. I asked it of you. Now I want to see through the lens of party pack mentality, mm -hmm. what would your answer be to how we can all work together to make running more accessible and inclusive? Um, I think it comes with visibility of all different types of athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that comes from the running stores and making sure that mannequins are of different sizes, different abilities, different uh, genders, different uh, ethnicities. And just as soon as people come in for their first pair of running shoes, um, I feel like it also, if they do have a running program, I feel like most running stores do, seriously taking a look at it and, you know, do you need to offer a walk group, you know, or is it a walk run group and have someone that's dedicated to stay with them if you offer that you're all paces welcome. Um, or if not, at least find coaches or other runners in the area that you can point them to. Hey, you're new to running. I know a great girl, Victoria. She's awesome. You know, uh, she she run walks. She would. I'm sure she'd love to come for your first run with you. And like pairing them and just knowing your community. I feel like that's yeah. all it comes down to is that community and knowing who's in it. Um, I feel like also at races stick to your designated time that you say for your course limit and have the experience be for everyone uh, at that designated time. Um, you know, we're not asking for courses to stay open for 12 hours, but if you say four hours for a half, it needs to be four hours. And that last finisher at four hours feels the same energy or at least have the same accessibility to the music, the metals, the, you know, the food, water, after, the right. water. I mean, um, everything uh, doing that. I feel like also too, I do see a tide turning, especially if people, you know, 80% of your runs should be, you know, easy pace runs and people, especially those faster runners showing their paces, not that you have to show your pace, but I feel like it normalizes the training schedule and the training sequence and what training smart training can look like. Um, 
and not every run you go out for is going to be trying to beat the next, the last run. Like we need to give our body that rest. We need to build that aerobic capacity and that baseline. And I feel like that's been a really great thing to see um, as well as in marketing, seeing again, the bodies that look like ours, the paces that look like ours, the not aesthetic, aesthetic running outfits that look like ours, you know, the real stuff. I feel like that's been helpful too. I love that. It's, and I just want to amplify something that you said, yeah. because it's so true with running stores. That is one of the first stops for yep. a lot of people. And if you're not walking into a running store, feeling like you belong there, mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard for you to feel like you belong in any of the run groups or any yeah. of the other activities that happen. So that's a nice call to action here for anyone. If you're listening and you own a run store of just thinking about how inclusive mm -hmm. is the store? Like how welcoming does the store feel to different what people? What is the user experience? And I, I, if I can share a quick story, I went in for my first pair of running shoes. I did not get from like TJ Maxx or Ross at our local store uh, back when I lived on the East Coast. And I was so nervous because all, I was single at the time, early 20s, early ish 20s. All the guys that worked there were super fast. Like you'd see them running around and like they're, you know, sub two, like two thirty marathoners, like we're wicked fast. And, um, that was pretty much everyone that worked in the store. Um, funny, they all came on to be some of my great friends and like, we still keep in contact and they don't live like they're amazing people. I was so nervous. Like my butt was sweating so bad getting fitted for shoes. Cause I was just so nervous. Cause like, and they're trying. So they're, nothing they did was wrong. I brought in my own insecurities. So nothing that they did was wrong. But I was nervous because I I'm starting running and I want to train for this. Remember, I trained for a full marathon before anything else. So if you remember yeah. that, story. so you know, and they were so sweet about it. Well, tell me what that's gonna like. How is that's? I'm excited for you. And but I was just so nervous because no one in that store looked like me. And um, and I'm middle medium size, whatever middle size, whatever the term is, you know. Now, so I can only imagine what it feels like going there, looking, even different bodied than I did yeah. going in there. Um, see, so yeah, I feel like it, it does start there. And, you know, I understand not every store is going to be able to have, you know, the body diversity, et cetera. Um, it's based on, you know, anyways, but I feel like just being able to have clothes that fit people in the store, you know, and if not in the store, you have accessibility to order, you know, larger bras, larger tops, things like that is, uh, important too. Yeah. I listen, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you one final question. And it's yes. just, I know you have a lot going on right now. Can you just <laughs> share with us quickly? Like what are the different offerings that you have yeah. and how can we connect with you sure. beyond this podcast episode? Awesome. Uh, yes. Yeah, so thank you. So I, uh, integrative health with Victoria is my Instagram and my website is Victoria Buker, B U K E R.com. Um, so those are ways to connect on there. I have a newsletter I send out, which if you go to the celebrate button, it'll be a celebrate to action instead of a call to action, put in your email and confetti pops out. And, um, I send like an e a newsletter once a month. I'm not the best at sending out newsletters, but feel free to, to do that. Uh, I am in the process right now of working on a lifestyle medicine course, uh, kind of a go at your own pace, uh, focusing on those women over 40 and runners kind of all included uh kind of like a high level uh go over your goals vision values and how to integrate a little um more wellness into your routine if that is something of interest that'll be coming out at the end of the summer and then i do private coaching so uh run coaching whether it's running plans and accountability or also the health coaching side as well i love it do you have any fun events coming up for yourself Oh, well, my husband and I were leaving for Hawaii <laughs> with our kids. Uh, so hopefully getting in some runs there. Hopefully this I thing gets figured out <laughs> today. Uh, what a great way to send off for vacation. But um, uh, let's see. I am training for my first postpartum half in the fall. Uh, city to see here in San Luis Obispo County. So you run from San Luis Obispo to Pismo to the beach. So I'm excited for that. Um, I know I, I feel like I can relate to many people. My training. I'm right now my base portion of it because we're still not getting much sleep and it is up and down, um, but feeling like we're on a positive trajectory. So it's definitely, you know, navigating different seasons of life and how that training looks. And again, coming with my why and not relying on that past self 
that I used to be able to, you know, run four days a week, wake up at four, go for a five mile run, go to work. That's not my life right now. Um, and navigating that and setting my new goal, my new norm for right now. That doesn't mean I'm always going to be in this season, but future self will appreciate me keeping the space and keeping what makes me happy, which is running and being in a community of amazing runners like yourself. I and love it. Yes. Yeah. I love it. And then that's just running. Running is the season mm-hmm. that we're in and yeah. you're such a, you're such a bright light for reminding us of the importance to celebrate that. And yes. it's okay. And if we're going to run for the next 20, 30 years of our lives, it's okay yes. to be in a season where maybe we're not running that much. Exactly. So, exactly. Victoria, thank yes. you so much for joining yes. me, yes. for being here. Do you have any final words for us? Oh my goodness. I, would love to hear if people um just share what they are most excited about and something we can celebrate with them, whether that's responding to, you know, if you want to share that in the post or whatever, but how can we celebrate you? Um, And I also invite you kind of your celebrate to action, a CTA call to action. Um, Can you invite with one per if you have someone sharing with you, they want to get into running. Can you invite them out for that first run or walk? and be there with them and their champion for them. Um, Because I guarantee you, you will help change your life and get them excited about running, uh, especially if you're with them during that first run or walk. I love that. Thank you, Victoria. Yes. Everyone, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.